Deze video, en eigenlijk is het alleen audio, hoort bij een podcastserie die ik, Frans Pollux, maakte in opdracht van Human voor NPO Luister. Het is de serie Het Apparaat, waarin ik op zoek ga eh, naar een heel maf apparaat dat de wetten van de natuurkunde schijnt te tachten en misschien wel een bron is van eindeloze energie. En die zoektocht brengt me uiteindelijk naar Canada, naar de uitvinder Thane Hines. We hebben lang met hem gesproken en maar een heel klein stukje van die gesprekken kunnen gebruiken in de podcastserie zelf. En ik wil hier de ongemonteerde, volledige gespreksopname droppen. Het is lang en het gaat heel diep in op dat apparaat dat hij heeft bedacht. Um, maar doe er je voordeel mee. Veel plezier met Thane Hines uit Wendover, Canada. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Hines. Finally. After... Because I've been thinking about meeting you for a month. I thought when my story about the machine in Venlo will not turn out to me meeting the guy. Or me, I think maybe I can go to Canada and meet Mr. Heinz. And he explains me his machines. Because in the end, it's all about electromagnetism. The thing in Venlo is. Yeah. The other uh, machines I discovered in Turkey and also your. It's, it's electromagnetism. That's the core of the things you discovered. Well, maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, well, the, the 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 core discovery that people are are finding out about now it's is that electromagnetism is not just electromagnetism. Uh, electromagnetism is electromagnetic field energy, and electromagnetic field energy is a form of energy that is create it so uh, on a subatomic level uh, electromagnetic field energy is created at the subatomic quantum electron level when electric current flows in a current bearing wire mm -hmm. so the reason that all these people are focusing on electromagnetics is because there are ways to tap into the electromagnetic field energy in order to perform various types of work so which is revolutionary because that's not what we well, what we're used to do no it it's it's not revolutionary at all it's just that our explanation of it or our understanding of it is incomplete Okay, so every electric car that's on the road today and every hybrid and even your gas-powered car is harnessing electromagnetic field energy in various ways to perform uh, different types of work, okay? So an electric vehicle during regenerative braking is harnessing created electromagnetic field energy in order to perform negative work, which decelerates the car during regenerative braking. Can you explain this to uh, Mule, if he's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Okay. See if they have a pencil inside or a, no. a piece of paper. Let's do this. This is like, I'm going to... I'm going to introduce you to negative work, okay, being performed at infinite efficiency okay <laughs> well it, it again once you get once you start getting into the explanation it kind of goes it becomes it becomes more and more uh, interesting okay so here we have an electric generator okay And what I want you to do is I want you to turn this electric generator, okay? And I want, just keep, just keep turning it at a steady state speed, okay? So go ahead and do that. Het ding is ongeveer 30, 20 centimeter lang. 20 centimeter denk ik aan. Er zit een soort cilinder aan, een draaiknop. Een knop van een centimeter of vier ja, doorsneden. Oké. Okay. Waar ik aan moet draaien. All right. Okay, so just keep just keep it going at a steady state speed. Okay, right. now not too fast. Just right. okay. So right now the generator 
is on no load, okay? No load. No load. It's it's not, there's no current flowing. It's not, you're just idling the generator on no load, okay? Now I'm going to, now I'm going to place the generator on load, okay? And you are going to violate Newton's first law. Are you ready? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to violate Newton's first law? <laughs> yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. So, so the first law of Newton gaan we nu overtreden. Yeah. That is so he's rolling over in his grave right now. Right. So keep going. Now I want to explain to you how Newton's first law right. yeah. works. Okay. So Newton's first law says I want you. To, you need to keep going. If I do this, okay. Yeah. So he puts a finger on it. He holds nu met zijn vinger dat ding wat jij moet draaien tegen. Dat is frictie. What I'm doing. Newton's first law says that the change in inertia of the rotor, okay, the change in inertia of the rotor right. is accompanied by an external unbalanced force. Okay, right. you're you, applying a force. I, I'm applying a force which is resisting right. the rotation. My finger is performing negative work. Okay, like. And does it cost energy? Yeah. yeah. Well. It requires energy. Okay, so if you keep going like that, and if I said I'm going to slow that, I'm going to slow that down, but I'm not going to use energy. I'm going to use voodoo or witchcraft or whatever. You might say, okay, well, good luck, right? But in order to slow that down, I need energy. I need to, like I, I need to apply energy. To it, okay. Right. So that's that's Newton's first law, and that's the first law of thermodynamics. In order to change the the kinetic energy of this thing that you're turning, mm -hmm. an external force needs to be applied, right. and external energy needs to be used to apply that force. I mean, I'm using the energy in my body. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change the kinetic energy of that system, but we're not going to be using any external energy or any external force. We're going to we're going to use internally created electromagnetic field energy. So keep going. Now you're connecting the wires now, attached to the current is going to flow through the coils and when that happens the electromagnetic field of energy around the generator coils will slow the is down. well wait till you see yeah exactly what gebeurt I can hardly move it you can you can hardly move it right okay now let's let's show you something else so just let me explain this and uh, yeah. this what er nou gebeurt is Hij maakt een, hoe noem je dat? Een, uh, uh, er, kom, er komt stroom op de elektromotor. Hij zegt ja. dat er stroom gaat lopen door, door een, um, een coil, hè, dus een, 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 een koperen draad een spoel, gewikkeld. Een, een spoel ja. van draad. En uh, dat, dat creëert een uh, magnetisch veld. En dat zorgt ervoor dat, dat ik met veel meer moeite uh, ja. die draaiing kan doen. Dus zijn punt is, want er zit verder geen externe energiebron nu aangesloten. Hij zit nergens waar. Aangesloten, toch? Nee. Nee. Ja. Dus zijn punt is wat hij normaal met de vinger moet doen. Dat kost energie, jouw afremmen. Ja. Ja. Nu doet hij het niet met zijn vinger, maar doet hij het alleen door een mag elektromagnetisch veld te creëren. En dat remt je af. Ja. Dus dat afremmen van jou kost energie. Dat is maar, wat hij claimt, maar ik zou denken dat uh, het elektromagnetisch veld creëren met die spoel, daar moet je stroom voor op die spoel zetten. Maar dat is dat jij draait, of niet? Dus how is the electricity in the, the, the wire... Has that something to do with the, him turning the? So, because he's turning and yeah, you're yeah. right now. You're generating a voltage in the coils. Right. Okay. But the there's some turning magnets. There's magnets and then there's coils in here. Yeah. Okay. But it's, really, it's the the magnets turning is creating an electric. The the ma the ma yeah. no the magnets that are t turning past the coils. Right. They're inducing a voltage in the coils according right, to right, right, right. Faraday's law of induction. Yes. Okay? And and 
Lenz's law of induction is a minus sign in front of Faraday's law of induction, which says that the created electromagnetic field energy performs negative work. And you, you can feel it, okay? So, let's do the math. Er zit een meter op aangesloten en er zitten twee, twee meters. Current, and that's the voltage. Right. So, just take a rough, let's say, 0.3. Something like that, yeah. Zero point, point zero 0.03 volts. Is what he is creating by yeah, turning the, the wheel. 0.3 amps. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, the power that you're producing here in watts is minuscule, right? Mm-hmm. right? Right? It's like so small. Now, imagine the... Okay. Just hang on a second here. It's, what did we say it was? Point zero 0.03? Yeah, point zero 0.03 and point 0.3 here. Times point. Point 0.3 is 0.009 watts. Right. And you c- how long would it like it's almost impossible. I'm getting a bit tired yes. now. Yeah, right. Yes. Now imagine that's 0.009 watts. Imagine if you were generating 27,000 trillion watts of motherfucking electricity. Imagine I'm Imagine. hearing the suspense music now uh, under your voice. Imagine how much, if you were generating, if you were, if you were generate like, if you were generating twenty-seven thousand trillion watts of electricity here, and this is what I said to you in the email. This is what you're going to be exposed. Pay attention to this. You need. 27,000 trillion watts of mechanical input power to generate your 27,000 trillion of output. Yeah. Now, which make, makes sense. Yes. For me. Yeah. Yes. And if if you're using fossil fuels like we are to generate 16,000 trillion watts of that electricity, okay? The rest is wind and hydroelectric and solar and whatever. You're producing 16,000 trillion watts of uh, uh, of electricity, but 16,000 trillion watts mechanical watts worth of of air pollution and CO2. Okay, which is killing the planet. In, please, it's what it's doing. Now, imagine, just imagine, turn it again. Mm -hmm. So that's a fair, this is a Faraday generator, okay? A Regen X generator, and which that's the thing you built. We'll be able to show you that tomorrow. The Regen X generator, the patent, it's patented and replicated. What it does, so what hap- you can stop for a sec. <laughs> what, you're turning, you're turning the generator in the... Anti, anti-clockwise. Well, let's say, okay, turn it in the clockwise direction. Yeah. You're turning it in the clockwise direction. When I connect, when current flows in the windings, the created electromagnetic field energy inside the current bearing wires, it produces a counter electromagnetic torque which you felt okay right. you felt it right? right and it's it's trying to turn the generator in the, the side. in the counter the the, the counterclockwise like right? yes the, 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 if, you, if you press the finger hard enough yeah. then the forces balance now, out and, and the thing okay is spent. keep going now we're now i'm i'm adhering to newton's first law Okay. Putting your finger on it again. Yeah. And now he takes the finger away and does it again with the stroom. Now we're violating I Newton's first law. Because this because is... Because Newton's first law says 
the energy has to be external. Yes. It can't it yeah. can't be internal. If it's internally created, well, now you're violating the law of creation of energy. Because he would he would break with his own uh, energy he's putting in to make it move. That's well, it's it's creating its own energy that it needs to perform the negative work. So the the kinetic it's because there are magnets in there, right? No. It's because I move the magnets. No. That generates no. the current. It's because current is flowing in the in the windings. If if this was a if you replace the magnets with electromagnets, the process would be the same. So so we are we are generating electricity in the generator, and the current that's flowing through the windings is creating the electromagnetic field energy that is performing the negative work that's reducing the kinetic energy of the system, which you felt, okay? So that's EV regenerative braking. That is uh, the classical engineering term is generator armature reaction. So when I was, when I was 19 years old, sitting in my motors and generators class in college, the teacher introduced us to generator armature reaction, this counter electromagnetic torque, and he, that's what he, that's what it's called. And I had, I was 19, 18, 19, whatever, and I had, I was studying physics before I transferred over into the electronics program. And so when he said counter electromagnetic torque, torque is work. Okay, if you've ever used a torque wrench or a ratchet or whatever to put a, a nut on, you're applying torque, but you need energy to apply torque. So when he said counter electromagnetic torque, I put up my hand and I said, Professor, where does the energy come from in order to perform the counter torque? Because torque is work and work requires energy. So what's the energy source that's required to perform the torque and he couldn't answer the question and even so the standard explanation for this uh, familiar phenomenon is there is no explanation well there is an explanation but the the scientific community doesn't want doesn't want to hear the explanation because the explanation is that the energy is being created in the electromagnetic field no, the electromagnetic field is the energy, but it's being created at the subatomic quantum electron level when electrons, so what's happening when you are inducing a voltage into the, into the windings? What okay. happens when you it? You're inducing a voltage into the windings. As soon as you put it so that it's a closed circuit okay now that voltage the voltage is called classical term is electromotive force okay it would be better if they called it an electron motive force because what happens then because now the electrons have a route to go they're not it's not an open circuit so now they hij maakt een kringetje en dan kunnen die elektrons rondgaan ja, uh, de, de, stroom de, dat is stroom now the electrons travel through the wire and the electron motive force or voltage is forcing the electrons which are in what's called the valence orbit around the atoms the nucleus square. so the valence orbit where those electrons are they're they're loose. They're at the outermost edge of the um, of the, um, the the orbit, the orbit around the the uh, the nucleus of the atom. So they're easily forced out by the electromotive force, and they leave one atom, and they cascade to the next atom, and when they when they drop back down to their valence orbit again they create and release photons which is energy they release energy they generate an electromagnetic field and you could say right the electromagnetic field is 
cre is created by and constituted by photons. So if you looked at the electromagnetic field around the wire, it's photons. Okay. That, that can, that can. Well, it's it's electromagnetic radiation, right? And, that and that's what fo all electromagnetic ra radiation are photons. Exactly, right. And photons, photons are the force carrier for the electromagnetic field. The force carrier, okay? So here's my finger, which is the force carrier okay. for Newton's first law. And the, uh, the force carrier in the electromagnetic field, that's the thing that's, that's performing the work. Yeah. So it's not but like... It's like applying like a force, right? That's Sorry? It's applying a force. It's, it's applying a force. counter electromagnetic torque a <coughs> counter force and it's performing negative work it's it's really important to understand that like if you're turning this at let's say let's say i don't know 10 rpm 20 whatever it is 10, let's say it's 10 rpm okay? 10 rounds per minute there's a certain, let's say the kinetic energy is 10 joules, just for argument's sake, okay? The kinetic energy is 10 joules. So then I connect it, and it, now it's harder to turn. Now you're, now you're turning it at, at uh, 5 RPM. And now the kinetic energy is 5 joules, okay? Just for argument's sake. The negative work performed by the generator is 5 joules of negative work because it's performing negative work, which is the kinetic energy reduction is equal to the magnitude of work performed, the magnitude of negative work, which is equal to the magnitude of energy required to perform that work. And it's all in, it's all in joules. So, um, can, can I ask a dummy question for, for, for me? Wait, wait. So, I, um, I first ask it to him and then in English. Dus, dat je, als je draait, um, Je, je, je draait en je kunt hem bewegen, maar vervolgens verbindt hij die draadjes en dan creëert hij, dan creëert hij stroom eigenlijk. Dan gaat er een stroompje lopen. Ja, ja maar ja. dit creëert door te draaien, toch? Ja. ja. Dus dat draaien van jou, wat eerst alleen zich vertaalde in de beweging, jouw energie vertaalt zich alleen in de beweging, maar nu beweegt dat ding, maar wordt er ook iets gecreëerd. Ja, dus je hebt beweging. Je hebt... En iets anders, dus ja. daarom is het moeilijker om hem te draaien. Je hebt beweging, je hebt magnetisme en je hebt elektriciteit. Uh, en als ik, uh, hier zitten magneten aan vast. Dus op het moment dat ik ga draaien, dan draaien die magneten in die spoel. Dan draait er een magnetisch veld. Ja. En dat genereert een stroompje. Ja, maar is het niet logisch dat zo gauw het ook een stroompje genereert, dat jou dat meer energie kost? Want je moet hem dan en laten draaien en je wekt energie op. Exact, dus ik, ik zet eigenlijk kinetische energie om in stroom. Ja, maar dus moet jij meer... Dus kost het meer energie om hem rond te draaien? Of is dat een hele yeah. rare... Ja, yeah, yeah? precies. Yeah. Oké, okay. the dummy question. Okay. If, I, if I turn this around without the wires connected, yeah. the thing inside is turning around, and that's a kinetic energy which I am putting in yes. by my hand. But the moment you connect the wires... So the first one was no load. Right, right. Okay. And so no load, I... Terms yeah, correct. and then you... Uh, unload. Uh, uh, unload. Yeah. And isn't it reasonable that it's difficult to... More difficult to move it because I'm not only rotating the inside, but I'm also creating... Uh, creating, electricity. So that's the reason why you're it's creating electromagnetic field energy, which is working against you. You're creating electromagnetic field energy inside the, mm -hmm. around the. If we could, if this, if you could see in there, you'd see the coils. Right. And around the coils, electromagnetic field energy is being created, which is like putting the finger on the magnets that are turning. Okay, they're. They're decelerating. They're, they're, they're trying to stop you from turning the generator. Yeah. So, but I am creating this, this force with my you have to energy. So, okay. So, on no load, okay, it's very easy to turn the generator. Mm -hmm. And if you generate, let's say, one watt of electricity, as soon as you generate one watt of electricity, you need to increase your mechanical input power to the generator by a minimum of one watt. Right. 
so one watt out yeah you ha but so, so so i would i would say or think that um i'm applying kinetic energy i'm applying a force yeah. that makes the thing turn yes and um the moment you connect the wires Wait, the moment you put it on load that energy is converted to electronic energy or to electricity so which to energy the energy I'm applying, and and we could do it the other way around. You could you could put it in the in in, in the so socket, okay, and then you could make it turn. Okay, so you're applying mechanical input energy, okay, which can come from you or a wind turbine right, right. or the kinetic energy of an EV that's going down the highway, right. and when the when the generator is placed on load, because it performs negative work because it produces a counter electromagnetic torque you have to it's called generator armature reaction okay you have to react now and increase your mechanical input power to maintain the speed of the generator otherwise it will stop yeah. otherwise it will if, if if you didn't like if so i would think it's just turning one type of energy into the other uh right? it's, it's turning kinetic yeah, energy into there's the no there's no there is no um there's no facility to turn mechanical energy into um uh negative work like in the generator you have to, you it, the so, okay so th that it is a negative force that it's that's the clue it's because it's negative work well so i'll explain the regenx generator which hopefully i'll be able to show you tomorrow yeah so the regenx generator if you're turning this that is what he had that's what yeah. he had to if you're turning this on no load and then when you connect it, the generator turns, the, the generator produces a complementary electromagnetic torque. Instead of a counter, acting against it, it goes in the same direction. Right, so, okay. Peak. So it gets easier to turn. And I'm turning it. Right, yeah. You turn it and it gets easier. It gets, well, in the regenx generator mode, this is it, this is it here. It gets easier to turn it, and you need less mechanical power. You need less mechanical power than you do on no load when you're generating electricity with a regenx generator. And the more electricity you generate, the easier it becomes. Easier it, becomes. So it gets faster and faster and faster and It faster. goes faster and faster and faster. That's why it's called, in an EV, it's called regenerative acceleration. And what it does is when it's recharging the EV's batteries, it's accelerating the car. So it's accelerating the car and and recharging the battery at the same time. And, perfor yes, it's performing positive work and accelerating the car. The generator would be accelerating you your hand right. and so <laughs> this was the discovery that i made in 2007 uh and what did you discover that made this work uh i made uh what, what is the underlying principle that you discovered that that makes it happen the underlying principle is that i created the 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 windings that are in this generator they are what are called uh, high current windings okay? okay they're designed to carry a, to produce a lot of current and so if they produce a lot of current they produce a lot of um, strong electromagnetic field energy so uh, and a, a strong counter torque Okay, so I was building, I was building, a, I was, I was looking for ways to reduce the counter electromagnetic torque. That was the, 
that was the function of our research that began in making two, the generator more efficient. That was making the, it ten percent more efficient. So three tons, and that means you would turn it, it would generate the current, yeah. but I wouldn't feel the pushback as much as I'm you, doing now. Yeah, you would. You would need ninety percent less, ninety percent increase in mechanical rather than 100%. While it would still make the same current? Yes, right. yes. So uh, that was the question, that was my follow-up question when I was 19 years old when I said to the professor, where does the energy come from to create the counter electromagnetic torque? Which he couldn't answer. And again, if you can talk to any physicist or any electrical they they, they won't be able to answer the question because they don't know the answer. And I'm t giving you the answer today. So the follow-up question to the professor was, sir, and he went on to explain that the electromagnetic field that was created around the generator coil was resisting the rotation of the generator's rotor. So he was explaining, he was answering my question, but he wasn't using the term electromagnetic field energy see if you use the term electromagnetic field energy if you just say electromagnetic field and stop there it's not complete if you say electromagnetic field energy now that energy is being used to perform negative work right now in our system we're using that electromagnetic field energy to perform positive work and it's extremely it's like this is why we went to MIT. We went. How, how can you flip that around? I'm going to get to that in a right. second. So, in 1980, when I asked the professor, I said, Sir, what about if it's the magnetic field that's entering the air gap between the rotating magnetic field and the generator coil, and that's slowing down the rotor? What if we could somehow divert that magnetic field away from... such a way that they get aligned? Or well, they're just divert it out of the way. Right. Just divert it so there's less of it doing less negative work. And that will make it more efficient. Yeah. And so he said, and these are his exact words, he said, okay, Thane, he was getting tired of my questions <laughs> by this time. And he said, okay, first, you're going to have to violate Newton's first law, Newton's third law, Lenz's law, the law of conservation of energy, and the first law of thermodynamics. All laws. All laws. Yeah. And he said, and then he looked around the class, and he said, he said, you can go ahead and try, but we all know that you're not going to be the one to do it. So please shut up and stop asking me such stupid questions. And here we are at the core why you are, so have put 40 years of your life into in, this quest. In 2007, when I built a generator in the basement that accelerated, that was what, what was supposed to was supposed to decelerate by 10% less than a normal one. That would be like colossal. Right. That would be huge. So when I built the gen the first the generator and it accelerated, you were surprised. Well, I was not only was I was surprised, I was mortified because because it accelerated itself so much that it it this it like this it it dis destroyed itself. I mean, the magnets started flying off. The started bouncing off the table. Uh, my my. You couldn't stop it anymore. No, it was it, it was. It, I had it on a table over there, and I had the wires over here, and I had it connected to an induction motor that was rated at 3,600 RPM. So when I and I had it set up so that it was running at a certain speed. And then when I connected the load, it started to speed up. And I was expecting it, it was supposed to slow down, okay? And 
when I connected, it would start to speed up. And, and it kept speeding up. The acceleration yeah, is infinite. But I was standing there going, what the hell is going, why is, what, like I was dumbfounded, okay? And it started speeding up and speeding up, and it was over on the t on a <laughs> table over there. And then the, the magnets that were on the rotor were starting to fly off and hit the ceiling and the wall. And, and then it started to get unbalanced, and then everything got worse and worse. And so by that, by the, stop it would be to disconnect the wires, right? Yeah, but it was plugged into the wall over there. So I had, I was crawling under the table to get to the plug on the wall so I could unplug it and stop it. Meanwhile, my wife, I was in my lab in the basement under the living room. My wife started to come down the stairs and she wanted to come into my lab because she could hear the the magnets hitting the floor uh, you know they were watching TV and she came down and she said what the hell is going on down here and I said don't come in my lab you'll be killed the magnets were like big one inch magnets and if she got hit in the head like yeah like uh, David and Goliath you know and I said don't don't stay out of here and I was under the table by this time trying to get to the plug to unplug it so I could stop it and uh, so after that experience I put it all back together and this time I had the plug over here <laughs> where I could unplug it easily and I tried and your wife was happy with this well that was my research I was that's what I was doing all right so I was the primary investor so okay. that was my work but did you think when that happened uh, did you uh, did you realize this is this is going to change no. the world no I thought it was bullshit and I tried to get rid of it so I I said this is not supposed to happen this is not what I want so <clears throat> for the next two weeks I tried to get rid of the acceleration phenomenon and you couldn't explain it and it was weird you no, thought it was no, an no, error I, I w after the electronics program in college I worked I did two two jobs in the field one of them was at Ottawa U as a prototype builder as an electronics technologist and the other one was a motor technician at the paper mill like literally that's across the other side of the river okay so I was a motor technician in the paper mill and I rebuilt motors and fixed motors and installed motors and everything. So my immediate assumption was that the motor, there must be a short in the motor or it was something was wrong. Something was wrong with the motor. That was the only explanation I had. So I took the motor all apart. I looked at all the windings. I, I couldn't find any issue and then when I put it back together I was I measured the I looked at the uh, input to the motor to make sure that in order for the motor to make the system go faster the the power consumption of the motor has to go up but right. but when I put it all together back, put it all back together and ran the test again under more controlled and safe conditions I noticed that the input to the motor was going down. It wasn't going up. It was go as it went faster, the input to the motor went down. So that was a that was a pretty big violation. That was a violation of of the. So, so you you are saying you invented this by accident? Was, but you, you were trying to do something it else, and worse. then you it gets worse. It, the story gets worse. Okay. So. When I was making my coils, I knew enough that the generator coils had to be high current coils, okay? So at that time, there was a store here called uh, Radio Shack, okay? Yeah. And uh, they used to sell what's called magnet wire, okay? To make a generator coil, you need magnet wire, which is, which is wire that's insulated with um, enamel, so that it's, so that the windings are insulated. Okay, like this, but it has paint on it, so that you can wind it, 
and make a generator coil. And they used to sell a three pack of magnet wire. So like, uh, I don't know, maybe like a 10 gauge and 15 gauge and then 30 gauge. 30 gauge is the really thin stuff like, like, uh, like human hair, a little thicker than human hair. So <clears throat> I made from 2005 to 2007, again, the idea was to divert the magnetic field out of the air gap, okay? That was, that was the basis of my research. Out of the air gap, Snob yeah. Out of yeah, the yeah. air. So, so between the magnets and the coils, uh, that there is, of course, some space. The rotor, the rotating magnetic field, and the generator coil, there's an air gap. Okay, it's like sixteen thousandths of an inch. It's very, very small. And what my research was focused on was Reducing finding a way to take that magnetic field and get it out of there before it hit the rotor. Okay, and so what I did was I made. Well, let me understand. So at first this kind of accidental discovery happened. You tried to get rid of the effect of acceleration, but but now at this point in your story, you were... This is before you were I made the discovery. Oh, before the, okay. Yeah, this is the even sillier part. So I used to go to Radio Shack and I used to buy the, 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 the wire. magnet wire. Yeah. And they were s small packages, okay? So I would go to a Canadian, to a, to a, uh, um, Radio, Shack? Radio Shack and I would go in I'd buy all the magnet wire they had on their shelf and then I would leave and then uh, I would use so the there was the gold one that was the thick wire and then there was the green one which was a little bit less thick and then was the red wire okay which was very fine and so I would use the gold and the green, and I would throw the red wire in a box, okay? And I, I, I had it came together in a package. And yeah, you, and three. You couldn't use it, so it was too, it was too small. It wasn't suitable for what I wanted. Yeah. So, so I would, I would buy, I would go in and buy all, and all the magnet wire that they had, and then, eventually, I had to go. I was living in Almont, and so I would go to Ottawa, I would go to Canada, and I would have all this, I would have all this, because I was making hundreds of coils. And this was before you could order them online? I didn't even know you could, I didn't even, I didn't even know you could order it online, okay? So, and a big spool, you know, like, I, I again, I, I was so uneducated, I didn't even... I, I didn't know much. So so I would go around and buy up, go in the store and take all their magnet wire. And then one, one time I went in and I went and I got all their magnet wire and I went to the cash and the guy looked at me and he said, you know, other people want to buy that shit too, you know. And they were mad at me because I kept, as soon as they got a shipment in, I would go into their store, take all their magnet wire, and then go to the next store and take all theirs. And and I was doing that for two years, like for two years. And by that time, I had a big box of red magnet wire that I couldn't use. And um, so my coil design was, it was a toroid. It was a round core. And I had two coils on each side. And the rotor went this way in like in between the two of them. Okay. And the idea was that the magnetic field created by each coil would stay inside the core and not go in the air gap. Okay. That was the idea. So I built this my coil for example and then i does that mean you're trying to 
change the orientation of the magnetic field? Yeah, I'm right. trying to keep the magnetic field in the core rather than making it, allowing it to go out into the air gap. So that was the design that I had gotten to by from 2005. Well, actually, I started uh, in 2000. And I started right after 9/11. That's a different story. And uh, by 2007, I had my toroid version, but then I needed a, I needed a, um, um, I needed a normal coil to test if you know to test my coil against per performance-wise under the same rotor rotating at the same speed, blah blah blah. And it was, um, maybe it was like Easter or something. It was the spring. And all of the stores were closed. Okay, all of the radio shocks were closed. And I was so impatient. You took the red wire. And I used the red wire. And I made, again, at that time, I didn't know why, I didn't know why, you know, the red wire was unsuitable, but I, I didn't know why, but maybe it was just a pain in the ass to try to wind it because it was so fine. So, so I pulled out the box of red wire and that's all I had. And I wanted to do my, I wanted to do my, I didn't want to wait three days for the stores to open and whatever. So I made... I made a coil out of the red wire and I made it extra big, like really big. And so that coil was a high impedance coil, okay? A high voltage coil, a high impedance coil, a normal generator coil is a high current coil, low impedance coil, okay? And the... <coughs> What is impedance? Weerst Weerstand? Weerstand? Yeah. So high ohm. Well, no, impedance is AC resistance. Resistance. Not, it, it's a high, high DC resistance coil and a high impedance coil. So impedance is, is, is AC resistance, okay? So that means that the, the current doesn't want to uh, the, the uh, sorry, the the alternating current doesn't want to change direction as fast. Okay, when you have impedance, it's like uh, it's like slowing that down. Yeah, it, it well it no not slowing it down just just uh, changing the the uh, speed at which it can alternate back and forth. Okay, so. Uh, so high cr the high voltage coil also in between the windings okay th uh, there's what's called parasitic capacitance okay and so when you when you get a high impedance high voltage coil at the right frequency of speed of rotation the the parasitic capacitance which is non-existent in a high current coil it becomes paramount okay which means that current can't flow in the coil and energy is stored in the parasitic capacitance of the coil like a it's a multi-parallel plate capacitor. So at a, above a certain speed or frequency of operation, the Regenx generator coil stores energy in the internal capacitance of the coil and then releases it in order to produce a time delay, uh, to produce a load current time delay. Okay, which in turn produces a uh, 
created electromagnetic field energy time delay. So in this version here. Begrijp je wat hij zegt over die rode draden? Want voor, ja, volgens mij is het cruciaal, maar daar raakt hij mij kwijt. Yeah, so the, the, you, you, you were trying to make a high impedance coil, or because yeah. you used the red wires, no, it just happened? Because I was so ignorant, okay? Yeah. The universe selected me <laughs> because because I because I was so ignorant that I didn't know that there would be a problem. And I didn't know anything. I didn't, you know, I I was learning as like any you, you just made this then stuff happened and now looking back at it or at a later point in time you understood well, what caused it so we we built the first prototype it accelerated i took the motor apart i tried I, for two weeks i tried to get ri rid of the acceleration phenomenon and then it. then i couldn't do it but i didn't know why i, I couldn't pinpoint it to my my you high didn't think about the red wires no 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 So um, then I called up my professor from college and I said, sir, do you remember the question I asked you in our motors and generators class? Which was 25 years before that. Years, yeah, whatever. And he said, he said, uh, he said, how could I ever forget in all my years of teaching? That was the stupidest question I ever heard in my life. And I said, well, okay, but you remember the question that I asked you about diverting the magnetic field, right? And he said, yeah. And he said, well, I achieved something similar to that, but my generator for some reason is accelerating when he put a load on. And I don't know why, and I'm hoping that you can help me understand, like help me figure it out. And uh, he wasn't interested. Uh, he wasn't interested at all, and he basically told me to leave him alone again. And so we went to MIT. We went to Dr. Zan at MIT, the like the number one guy in electromagnetics in the world at that time. And I've uh, read about this. He 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 saw it. He saw it up close, and he said, "There's definitely something we, I can't explain with the, with we, the things I know." Yeah, we went there, and we said. We said, Dr. Zan, please tell us why this generator is accelerating when we put a load on. Because, and also, please tell us if anybody else has discovered something similar. There must be something in the textbooks that somebody did something. And tell us what it is. Tell us why it's doing what it's doing. And tell us if you think it's has any commercial viability so and uh there were half a dozen of us in his in his office doing the demo in like government people from ottawa that were there and, and, and the demo was you, you showed them the uh, region x uh, generally the prototype that i yeah and I it was accelerating it was accelerating and he, and and he said um And he said, I have no idea why it's accelerating, but he said it, um, and he said it shouldn't accelerate. It, no, he, he said, he said, he said, no, he, he said clearly it's accelerating. Everybody can see that why it's accelerating. We don't know. Does it have any commercial viability? Probably it does, but that was it. That that was all. And and so like a toned down reaction, small. Just like let's nuanced. be careful. Yes, it's doing what you say it's doing. We don't know why. It requires further investigation. Let's do that. So we we and at this point at 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 the very start you were trying to get rid of the effect, but at a certain point. You must have thought, yes. I'm onto something. At, at a certain point, I said, okay, if I can't get rid of it, 
Yes. Like, like if you can't beat them, join them. So because I, because I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing, I thought, okay, let's see if it can be useful. Okay, so that's, and that's what, that was one of the three questions that we had for Dr. Zen. Is it real? Uh, is it viable? And what is it? And he answered, you know, it is viable. What it is, we don't know, and, and, and so on. So then we, then we went to Ottawa U. Ottawa U gave us, you okay? Yeah. Ottawa U gave us a lab to, and we set up a... It's a university. Yeah, yeah. Ottawa University. And we set up, we were going to, we were setting up a research collaboration between MIT and Ottawa U to figure out why this acceleration anomaly was occurring. But what none of us knew was that we were, you know, we were violating all those laws of physics, like all of them that 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 professor said I we weren't going to do in college. And um, and we set up a research collaboration in order to to and when you're talking about we, then you're... MIT and Ottawa U. Yeah. And, so, and, and we is you and maybe Dr. brother... Zan, Dr. Zen, Dr. Habash, Ottawa U, MIT. But the handwork is just you, like the, the building and the concept. Yeah, uh, me and um, my... Uh, a friend of mine who is... is, uh, is okay. He's, he, you know, he's, a, he's an energy... Or he's, a, he's an electronics guy, researcher guy. So we set up in the power lab at Ottawa U and we, we, we ran a series of tests until we, we focused our attention to the coil. And then we realized, okay, it's the coil that is creating the acceleration. It's not the motor, it's not... And they were still the same red wires? Yes, okay. in fact, the proto one of the prototypes it, it, from one of the prototypes in in the house is from Auto U. I built it at Auto U. It's still functioning. And um, <laughs> the, the the concept that we had with Dr. Zan was that we had we had a motor, okay, that was turning a generator. And the 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 this is our first patent actually that the electromagnetic field energy around the the generator coil because every the rotor was steel everything was steel okay so the only explanation that we had was that the magnetic field energy created around the generator coil was getting into the rotor which was steel going and finding its way through the drive shaft into the motor and increasing the magnetic field in the motor like that a closed loop yeah like a like like if you if here we have a magnet if you put a magnet big magnet on the outside here the motor will turn faster because the magnetic field strength is stronger so that was the that's what we went with with MIT. We said, this must be happening. And in and in the demo, and I can show you pictures. In the demo, um, in the demonstration, I we had a drive shaft that part of it was plastic. Okay, and what I would do is put a steel bar in the plastic tube to create a magnetic connection and when the steel bar was taken out it didn't work, it didn't work. and when we put it in it worked. it worked so that was the basis of our conclusion General patent and that's what dr. Zan commented on he said if you can you know if you can use this generator idea to make that induction motor more efficient then you have a winner because there's millions of uh, induction motors and then you Immediately you think this thing works forever. It's infinite, no. infinite en energy. It can no. run houses and no, 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 no. Because as soon as you unplug the induction motor, it stopped. So it, 
And when we went to MIT, the Toronto Star, Tyler Hamilton, they heard about it. Hamilton is the journalist. Yeah. And he heard about it. So he was covering the story. And he used the words perpetual motion. When he interviewed Dr. Zan after the demo, he said, is this perpetual motion? And of course, Dr. Zan was like, are you an idiot? Like, give me a break. The, we don't even know what this is. That's like saying, you know, is the Wright brothers first airplane that threw, flew 30 feet as a space shuttle? Like, come on. Like, he was pretty upset by the question. So, Ty- but that the, the journalist is thinking about perpetual motion, I would say is logical because if you you have to plug it in, but it no, gives journal- more no, power the, the on the outside. The journalist out- is the journalist is performing fake news, trying to create a sensation, something because again, a, a generator is not supposed to act like a motor. It's not supposed to accelerate itself, okay? That's like, well, now pigs can fly. Like, this is really freaky. So what we were trying to do initially was we were trying to look for a logical explanation to something that was not logical. Again, if you put your foot on your brake in your car when you're going down the highway and it goes faster, you're going to freak out. You're going to be like, what the... And your foot's off the gas. You're going to go like, what the bloody hell? So this is what we were... And we were all like, how can this be? Like, and we went to doctor... I was on my knees. I was like, we were paying him like $600 an hour for five hours to like tell us what it is. But because the journalist mentioned the term uh, perpetual motion... Dr. Tan said, no, not with the, me. The, the, the journalist then, uh, when we were coming back, he called me up and he said, is, is it perpetual motion in your opinion? And I said, same thing Dr. Zan said. I said, we don't even know what it is. So, and by the way, I don't even know what perpetual motion means. I, I literally had to, I didn't know what it meant. So when somebody says now, perpetual motion okay they don't know what they mean okay I, on our original call i said there's there's it, first I'm, kind there's second kind. first kind second kind third kind and our research introduces a perpetual motion machine of the fourth kind and the fifth kind okay and a perpetual motion machine perpetual motion machines are impossible because they have to run forever and you can't make a machine that's going to run forever because of the mechanical parts yeah, yeah. So but that's that's the limit the but, mechanical side of it but the researchers that are out there okay that they what they want to the free energy guys the whatever guys what they want to do is what's called a self runner okay uh, 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 one that you can connect the output back to the input and so on and so on. <coughs> they want to create, a, and you see them on. Well, what, what's the difference between a self-runner and a perpetuum mobile? Okay, so. Self-runner is the first kind. No, no. Perpetual motion machine of the first kind is is any machine that performs work positive or negative work without externally supplied energy. Okay. Yeah. This is a perpetual motion machine of the first kind. I wijs now naar de elektromotor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you know why? No. Do you agree with me? No. This you said because it performs negative it work. It performs negative work it performs oh, yeah. negative work without external energy. It's a perpetual motion machine of the first kind. So the now, world's full of perpetual motion machines. And that's what I said to you on our right. thing. It, this is why I said the universe, God, whatever you want to say, is a practical joker and the joke is on everybody because, because 
This is a perpetual motion machine of the first kind, which performs negative work without externally ex external energy being supplied to it. That's the, the, the operative word is external energy. It's the energy that's performing the negative work is internally created energy. So it's not only is it a perpetual motion machine of the first kind, it's violating Newton's first law and it's violating the law of conservation of energy. Uh, um, but because its energy source is endless. It's infinite. Well, it's, it's created, it's limited to the size of the generator, but, but uh, essentially it's unlimited in how much can so be so produced. You're this is an example of a, in a certain way, this is an example of a perpetual motion it machine, is. but it's not a self-runner. No. Yes. That's okay. A, that's, that's a perpetual motion machine of the first kind. So you have one in your truck. I have one in my car. Every EV, every EV that's using regenerative braking, perpetual motion machine of the first kind. It, but it, and if you go on Wikipedia, they're very careful. They say work, but work can be positive and work can be negative. Okay, so uh, our generator performs positive work. And accelerates. That's why our my discovery, our discovery in 2007 is so critical because the electromagnetic field energy is performing a type of work that nobody ever thought could happen. And if we're fortunate enough that you can come tomorrow, you'll be able to see the in the prototype that I made at Auto U the load current sine wave for the conventional coil that's in the prototype and then the load current sine wave for the regen x coil and you can see that one of them is delayed in the time domain so it's it's the delay it's the delay of the current the right, right, right. The, because of the delay it is kind of it's turning into self resonance it's, no or it's it, because of the delay it's assisting the rotation rather exactly. than resisting it so if you if you walk towards me and I was a Faraday coil I would push on you to slow you down then when you were walking past me I would grab on you and try to pull you back if you're a regen X coil I'm gonna let you get to here before I do any kind of force and I'm gonna push you to make you go faster that way and I'm gonna grab you and pull you faster this way. But the key it's is the delay because that, that is what makes it in into phase. Time delay. It's a time delay. Yeah. So if you and that's why the over Unity guide, the, 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 the Dutch engineer that when he did his replication. Ah the Dutch guy I didn't talk to who built a regenix. I don't even know who he is. Okay. I, like he's a just some anonymous engineer guy that replicated the technology oh and he's on the he's on youtube yes. and we couldn't find the source of it but yeah. we hear uh, dutch english die heb ik in een van de eerste afleveringen gebruikt hoor je hem vertellen he did a very good uh, evaluation because he ran his motor at 50 hertz and then he ran it at 60 hertz like at 50 hertz it operates like a faraday generator okay 60 hertz slowing down still 70, 80, and then when he gets to 100 hertz, now it's accelerating. The frequency is crucial. The frequency, the, f the, the frequency is uh, how how snel die die draait. Hoeveel rondjes die per minuut yeah. maakt. Yeah. The frequency, as the frequency goes up, the impedance of the coil goes up. So this coil has in very day. low impedance in here. Okay, so that means that the alternating current changes very rapidly as the frequency if you increase the speed of this to like 10,000 rpm the impedance of the coil would get higher but um, in a regen X generator coil as soon as you get to a certain speed then now the, the time delay causes causes the whatever to become in, in phase and it flips the instead of 
slowing it down it starts speeding yeah, it, it up what it does is is it is it the 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 impedance of the coil delays the current's ability to flow in the coil which delays it, the the ability to produce the magnetic field and it forces the coil the coil is forced to store energy internally in the electrostatic field inside the coil so you know what a capacitor is okay yeah, it stores the so a capacitor is two plates with a, a dielectric in between okay and it stores voltage in the dielectric okay so in a regen x generator coil the 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 plates of the capacitor are the windings okay one plate two plates and the dielectric the air get the air between the windings is the dielectric so in the regen x coil above what's called the critical minimum frequency and you'll see it in the dutch replication at 100 hertz at that increased frequency and increased impedance now the coil the current's not allowed to flow okay and and the guy even does it shows it mathematically okay and so now the now the voltage which is induced in the coil it, it, current can't flow so it has to store the the energy somewhere and it stores it in the parasitic capacitance between the windings and in here the impedance is so so low that the parasitic capacitance of these coils is negligible okay it's, it's not even an issue now parasitic capacitance becomes an issue in like cell phone towers and anything that's using high frequency so in the regen x coil because it's using high impedance coils at a certain frequency that creates the load current time delay which creates the acceleration and if you if you take a regen x generator coil and that's what you'll see let's think positive in the electric motorcycle at 30 kilometers an hour <laughs> you're in regenerative acceleration mode so you're recharging the battery and accelerating the vehicle and at and below 30 kilometers an hour now you're in regenerative braking mode you're recharging the battery and slowing down the car and the only differential is the frequency and or the two differentials is the frequency well and the impedance of the coil and the 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 increased parasitic capacitance which grows with the frequency so we introduce a, a load current delay into the generator coil so my question to the professor in 1980 was could we divert the magnetic field out of the air gap not really not really but could we delay the magnetic field and when we delay the magnetic field now we're using the created electromagnetic field energy to perform positive work so you don't um, change the direction of the magnetic field no um, but the, the, the electromagnetic field gets generated just a little bit later in time where we're using the parasitic capacitance deliberately voltage builds up in the coil okay at a certain speed and and then the the dielectric between the windings the air it's air can only store so much energy okay can only store so much voltage and then it it stores it and then it releases it and once it ah. but the and but that's causing the time delay that well there's there's three time delays <laughs> there's the there's the capacitor time delay and an inductor okay when you apply a voltage to an inductor there's a five time constant rise time that it takes 
five time constants for the magnetic field to be fully uh, manifested around the coil and uh, that's the magnetic that's the uh, the math part that this the Dutch guy does he shows it very clearly and so you have the five time constant you have the you have the the capacitor action okay storing the voltage delaying the current storing the voltage then you have the five time constant rise time which is increased as well because of the higher frequency and higher impedance and then you have core hysteresis okay so when you when you have alternating magnetic field in a piece of metal it hysteresis you know do you remember the tape decks we used to have the tape recorders with the tape yeah okay so, so like you said yeah okay. so they work on they store their magnetic strips that right. store magnetic they're magnetically charged so um, they're storing information in the history of the magnetic strip okay so a core has what's called hysteresis in it so it doesn't want to change instantly as well so when the when the magnetic field is trying to change direction all of these things cause a little bit of time delay and dum, if you dum, do it dum. just right yeah and you align it with the right frequency yep. then it kind of snaps yep. and then when it's critical minimum frequency and it's I'm, I'm when I get home I'll send you the Dutch guys videos because no, no, I, I have the video I used it in the podcast yeah it's an old one isn't it yeah but it's but the one he uses where he shows he shows it at the first one he does from 50 hertz to 100 and then he does another one 50 60 70 80 90 100 and the closer he gets to the critical minimum frequency okay the less input is required until he goes beyond the 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 point where now he's the it's accelerating and the input is going down the light bulbs lighting up and it's the input to his system is going down and if i may so so um you first discovered it you tried to get rid of the effect then you thought maybe there's something into this so then you I didn't know how to get rid of it right you didn't you didn't succeed in and getting rid of it else knew how right to get then rid of you it. approached people like like dr zahn um you tried to figure out what caused it what what the explanation was yeah. Um, and now you're telling us a full explanation. So, so yeah. how did you find out? Or well, Dr. We, San said, I don't understand yeah, it. We, yeah, so, okay, so we went to Ottawa U and we, we said, okay, our goal is to, is to figure out why this is happening. And by this time, Tyler Hamilton, Toronto Star, he, journalist, he put out his, they put out their story and said, Thane Hines, blah, 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 goes to him, or Ottawa inventor goes to MIT with his blah, blah, blah thing. Is this perpetual motion? Okay, so they, he asked Dr. Zed, is it perpetual motion? No, and you're stupid for asking. He asked me, is it perpetual motion? No, and you're stupid for asking. Well, he wrote it anyway. But when he, when he put the story out, <laughs> he was careful not to say it's perpetual motion but he said is it perpetual motion to create a buzz okay to sell the story to sell advertising and in fact the I even brought it it's right there the the um, the, the Toronto Star article that they put out in 2000 2008 was the most read second most read article in the history in that year's history the only person that the only story that beat us was uh trump running in the election so it was the, it was the ultimate clickbait it was the second yeah so it was clickbait it was fake news and uh tyler called me at uh i was on you he called me and he said thane i'm so sorry the editor 
put in the is it perpetual motion thing it, the byline so there was the headline and then the byline and of course as soon as because people are emotional as soon as Dr. Zen saw that he was like thank you for ruining my reputation I'm out of here and that and then all of a sudden you know then all of a sudden Luke and I my my friend who's he's my business partner as well we were the scum of the universe of the university and we were the guys that the professors wanted to kill and uh, get kick us out and whatever so um, so we had to we had to isolate down the anomaly we had to again we thought it was the magnetic field so eventually in one experiment we had a a piece of plastic pipe that was three feet long and we were still able to get the acceleration so i said to my investors i said you know that patent that you guys spent like 25 grand on or whatever and they're like yeah i said well it's obsolete we have to write new ones so um that's that's the process dit was deel 1 van ons ongemonteerde gesprek met Teen Heinz de Canadese uitvinder voor het complete verhaal luister naar de podcast Het Apparaat op je favoriete podcast app.